And so the whole point of that is you never know the impact that you have. You never know the legacy that you leave because you take the time to say, what's going on, Chase? What's going on, Ashley? And because the president of the Alphas, the Q, the president of Kappa Delta, whatever, Sigma, whatever, said hello to me. Or they said my name, they knew my name, they knew I existed. You've made their day, probably their college career, and you never know that. The cameras are always rolling. So think about the legacy well, you that you're doing. Away. You're making an impact on people's lives that you don't even know. They'll never, they may never say anything to you, but they're still watching you. But if you don't give your very best, you're cheating yourself, you're cheating them, and your organization. Brock is symbolic of all of you in here. Whether you're a president, a VP, anything on your exam board, general member, just join, whatever. Whether you're a little, whether you're a big, whatever. Neo, pro, well, it don't matter. You carrying somebody on your back, whether that is campus, whether that's your hometown, it don't matter. You carrying somebody on your back. It's gonna hurt. Because they're gonna call you middle of the night. They're gonna need something. And it's pain. And you're gonna wanna stop. You know, why did I sign up to be the president? Why did I even go Greek? Why we gotta jump through all these hoops and all this red tape? It's gonna hurt. You're gonna wanna quit. But you got all those eyes on you. Look at how is he gonna handle the situation? How is she gonna handle this situation? The camera is always, my dad told me, I was six or seven years old. And he said, son, whatever you see me do, you can do it too. Whatever you see me do, you can do it too. Now, I'm, I'm six, seven, five, six, seven years old. I'm not really understanding what that means. But as I got older, I started to understand. And he told me, he said, son, if you see me, Place a hand on your mother, you can place a hand on your mother. You see me smoke a cigarette, go ahead, have your pup. You see me drink alcohol, you can drink alcohol. You hear me cuss? Go ahead, cuss. So when he said that, think about the level of accountability that he put on his shoulders for me. Think about it. How many of you guys are willing to tell those that you lead Whatever you see me do, you can do it too. Think about that. To this day, I've never seen my father lay a hand on my mother, never seen him smoke a cigarette, never seen him drink alcohol. Believe it or not, never heard my dad cut. So think about that level of accountability. When everything's going good, everybody wanna raise their hand and say, yeah, I did that. That, yeah, that was your boy. <laughs> I did that. Did you see me? But when things go bad, when the organization is not in the best light, when the event don't happen the way we thought it would happen, when the members don't show up, or other students around campus don't Nobody show up. Nobody wanna step up and say it's my bad. And that's what accountability is about. As but what condition are you leaving the organization in after, after you leave? Because if the organization collapses or takes some steps back, that means that you didn't do your job as leader developing those coming behind you. True or false? It don't matter how popping the parties, the events, the community service events were when you were there. But if I can see a significant difference in a negative light, you didn't do your job as a leader. You gotta have somebody come behind you to carry the torch. You gotta have somebody come behind you to carry on your legacy, the organization's legacy, whatever legacy, you gotta have somebody come behind you and do that. That's what you have to do. It's your job. It's your responsibility. When you fall off the pedestal, you, the people up there, guess what? It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt because you're going to be upset with yourself. You're going to be disappointed. It's like, man, I let my tail down. I let my organization down. I let my friends down. Hey, I let my university down. I let my hometown down. I let the Greek community down. It's going to hurt you, but guess what? I guarantee you, it's gonna hurt the people that put you up there even more, even more. And the reason I say that is because those people trusted you in some phase of their life. They trusted you with, with, with their life. They put their life in your hands and said, leave me, guide me, tell me the right way. Let me follow you and do what you do so I can do what you do, other people can follow me. 
Here's the thing. You can go to Walmart right now, buy a camera, buy a phone, buy some milk, whatever. Get in your car, realize, oh no, let's take it back. Guess what? Newsflash, PSA. You don't get a receipt for a person's life. You don't get a receipt for that. When you mess up, you get, oh, my bad, I'm sorry, can I get a refund? It don't work like that. I'm confiding in you, I'm buying into you. I'm trusting you to take me there. Now, is that fair to you? No. But that's how it is. You can't get past it. You're not gonna be able to avoid. I'm sorry. You, cho you chose to be a leader. You didn't have to pick. You didn't have to pick up the phone and say, "Yeah, I want to be a leader." We ignore calls all the time. Like I said, it's not a calling. It's a choice. You chose to be the president. You chose to join the organization. So when leadership calls, that's what you picked up. Yeah. Leaders become leaders to bring about change. Leaders become leaders to expand their language. Leaders have that fire, that joy, and that passion, that ability to lead in no other fashion. Leaders understand that leaders must be well equipped, but leaders also understand that change can't happen until there is a leadership. And I mean a shift in the heart, the mind, the body, and the soul. Leadership is a fire that burns and never gets old. Leadership is big and leadership is bold. So my question to you today, what yeah, you talk to it because you see something. Because you have to see that you have a, it's a different it's a different lens that a leader looks to. And good leaders see the people that they need to develop and that have potential to be better leaders and take organization further. Why do you think I have right. you stand up? Hmm. Okay. Let me ask you this way: Why did you? Do? Respectful. I like that. What's your name? Ruben. Ruben. Gotcha. One more reason why you. You're leading the. Um, oh, so I'm up here, so okay. just out of respect. You just, okay, let's stand up. Okay. Why did you come up here, John? You're sharing knowledge with us. I figured I would give you the time and respect to say something from Appreciate that. You listen to me because of the position that I was in. You're leading us, you're in the front, you're sharing knowledge. So the position that I was in allowed me to influence you guys to stand up and sit down, right? And guess what? You listened to me probably because you had to. You felt the need, you were compelled out of respect to listen to this guy because he's in position. For one, I want him to help me and see if he knows what he's talking about. But I have to listen to him. So Same. as an influential leader, a lot of times people listen to you because they have to. He the president. I, got, I think I better listen to him. Because he got a little power, she got a little authority. Know we, do. Right? we know where we need to get to. We get to that mark and we stop. But if we give our very best, if we give our very best, the sky is the limit for us. We know we can get the C in the class or the B in the class, but we don't want to put the extra hours in the study to get the A in the class. Right. Three top people you need in your life? You need somebody below you. You need somebody underneath you. To help for you to develop, to bring up to your level, to make them a better person, make them a better leader. You need somebody underneath you. Gotta, you got to mentor somebody. Oh, do you know you have all the knowledge that you do have? Don't share with nobody. Somebody share with you, right? That single person, you need somebody on that same level that you're on. You need somebody on that same level that you're on, so y'all can go through the growing pains together. Man, I don't know how I'm gonna get 112 guys to do this, but I'm buy into that. But this dude may have 130 in his organization. He said, but this is what you got to do. You can have that hard conversation and tell them this don't happen, this don't happen. So you gotta have somebody to go through a wish and grow with you. And thirdly, what's the, what's, what's the third thing? What's, what's the third kind of person? You gotta have somebody above you. That's a mentor. You gotta have somebody that's been there, done that, worn a t shirt, actually got a couple of them. Because you learn from them. And it's, it's, it's gonna continue, it's a trickle down effect because. You are underneath 
the person you underneath. But they're underneath somebody that's telling them those things that they know. But if you're <laughs> only an influential leader, there is something that you, not, that you don't have. You don't have that inspiration. You don't have that level three of the leadership to help you inspire your members to do this. If you don't get to level two, you're not thinking differently to do this. You're not learning from the mistakes. So you need every level, every phase, every area. You need all of those. And that's why I say it's levels to this thing called leadership. Ultimately, yes, you want to get to that level to where you impact lives. But you can't impact lives if you can't inspire lives. You can't inspire lives if you can't become creative and innovate and do things differently. If you can't influence people to do things, how can you make an impact? Use them all to work together. That is what this together is about. Being able to borrow from your tool belt of leadership. Because you're not going to use a hammer to take out a screw.